Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Health and Wellness Sport. And this is another video on the chain of videos that uh, concern gut microbiome, probiotics and prebiotics, and gut microbiota. And this is probiotics. I am Dr. Lewis, and this is the Health and Wellness Sport. So welcome. Now, what are probiotics? Probiotics are basically uh, live microorganisms that when administered in adequate amounts, okay, they confer an added benefit to the hosts. Now, that is by definition. I want you to know we call them marking points <laughs> or points to understand. We have live, we have adequate amounts, then we have host benefits. So those three words are the most important in the definition of probiotics. So they are live microorganisms, they are administered in adequate amounts, and then they confer benefit to the host. So out of these three, we will get to understand as we go deeper. Now, number one, the live. So what do we mean by live? We mean the bacteria in that uh, food. So basically, this is just uh, uh, the, the microorganisms. So they have to be living. They have to have life. Okay? You don't administer bacteria that are dead like vaccines. Okay? You administer them uh, when they are live. And these are found in soy crude, which is fermented cabbage, and mursik. I insist on mursik because the yogurts that are bought on the supermarket shelves are a mess. They have sugar, and that sugar will uh, be a problem to your health because of yeast infection. And again, because we don't use sugar in this channel, so we prefer mursik over yogurt. Again, remember that uh, they have to be administered in adequate amount, and therefore that means, uh, remember uh, for the synthetic products, they have billions of bacteria, and that is also another serious problem, because right? some of them can be uh, can be excess and cause issues. But adequate amount. This is the reason why synthetic products are not used. Of basically uh, synthetic products, fermented foods, beverages, and sugar is a mess. It's a total mess. So you cannot trust any product that is synthetic, uh, that has uh, fermented uh, probiotics. Has sorry, that has this bacteria. So that is the reason why people prefer natural one over the synthetic ones. They have high content of bacteria. They also uh, have sugar. And the, the beverages, in these fermented foods, are used uh, in very large scales. And we can't trust the food industries anymore. So therefore, it's good for you to prepare your own. That's where then the yogurt and the soft comes in. Because we know how to prepare them. Now on the yogurt, you need just milk from a cow. Ferment it without boiling it. And then utilize it consume it without adding sugar so that is part two of the definition part three has to confer health benefits to the host now on this one is where people go wrong because people ask me if at all fermented foods have these probiotics why is it that we are being told not to take beer or wine and these two are fermented and contain those bacteria yes they do they have yeast they are also fermented foods however they do not confer any health benefits to you because B and wine confer uh, uh, harmful effects to you, to your liver and your system in general. So B and wine do not suit the definition of probiotics. And therefore, we'll stick to fermented cabbage and more sick for that matter. Okay? And also, ladies, stop using yogurt to clean your vagina. It is not necessary that you use yogurt to clean your vagina so that you acquire those bacteria. Once you take this yogurt through your mouth, once you drink it, it is enough to help you get the bacteria that will help you nourish your vagina. You do not need to wash your vagina using yogurt. That is a misconception that needs to be corrected. Okay? Same to the misconception that if you use soda to clean your, your, your vagina, it gets tighter. I don't know who provided that misinformation. And people are ripping out of this. Okay? So it will be harmful to you. So do not drink or do not use yogurt to clean your vagina. Drink it if you have to. Okay? Good. Then... So we've talked about the three uh, definitions. Now, the formulation of these probiotics, they come in terms of tablets and capsules, and you can add these to milk, to cheese, and other fermented foods. Okay, We also have gels and creams. So gels are for the skin. You can apply skins. Remember, these bacteria are on your skin, are on your gut, are in your urinary tract system, and therefore we need to uh, formulate things or uh, compounds that will help you uh, to approach them differently. And for vaginas, you can get uh, creams, and for the skin, you can get gels. So the question that obviously comes out is, what probiotic should I use? And that question is a hard one to answer. 
Why am I saying it's a hard one to answer? Because uh, different condition, conditions require different microorganisms to heal or to uh, uh, confer benefit to you. So if you have different conditions, then you have to find data concerning different probiotics because they are ingredients. So always be sure to read the ingredients so you'll know the bacteria that are part of that probiotic. And then you'll know if they totally help in your condition. So it's a hard question to answer because now we have to tap it to individualized uh, uh, people. Okay, and the difference uh, uh, comes here when uh, you have maybe a chronic uh, colon issue, then you go ahead and take a probiotic that has bacteria that survive in the small intestines, that makes it even worse. Okay, so find data, utilize that data to help you, uh, help yourself on that condition that you're suffering from. And again, a point to note about these probiotics is that they are not supposed to be used to replace medical treatment. Do not use a probiotic or those foods, the fermented garbage, to replace medical treatment. You need medical treatment if at all you have a condition that is chronic. Again, if you have SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, remember we said you cannot use probiotics or prebiotics like sucrut if you have SIBO because you lose it. Remember, most bacteria reside in the large intestines. And SIBO is where bacteria from the large intestine find access to the small intestine. They start fermentation processes and therefore they yield those gases that give you bloating and discomfort in the abdomen. So if you use fermented cabbage or probiotics for this case, then you're even overloading your small intestines with bacteria and that will make it even worse. So do not replace your medical management or therapy with probiotics and also do not use these this, uh, compounds or these microorganisms when you have SIBO. So that is probiotics.